Hello, everyone. Uh, before we begin, I just wanted to say that um, there's a lot of fear and anxiety kind of floating around in the atmosphere right now, and um, we we're here for you. We we understand that, and um, if if there's anything that the library needs, this is what we're here for. We can help you find resources that may help you, um, you know, whatever it is that's going to help you out here in in these in these times. Um, I believe in the indomitable will of the human spirit, so um, I think we're all going to be okay. But if you're feeling um, any which way and you need some help or need to know what what it is that you can find out there to help you out um, to navigate your feelings and anxieties and concerns, then um, that's what we're here for. Come on by and knock on our door. We'd be more than happy to help. Uh, and with that, uh, welcome to another um highly charged uh installment of club moffat talks uh the only podcast uh hosted by three white guys uh from a library um in wichita falls texas okay okay yeah <laughs> a lot of asterisks there like this, <laughs> yeah, this you, one and this yeah, and this, this like this. You, you, you had to add enough qualifiers to make it be true yeah, yeah but when you get to a certain point it's like the way we do our research you know we have to add more and more and more until we finally get there that, um, th that's true um i am your host uh instruction librarian christy panetta and i am joseph mcneely i am also an instruction librarian and i just wandered in here i don't know who i am <laughs> okay i don't yeah we i don't think any of us know who we are right now um today is going to be a little more of a relaxed episode um I mean, it's november finals are coming up um it's cold and rainy outside it, we, we went from like blazing hot and humid to it's it's literally not stopped raining all week um and cold so yeah uh, i think we're all in a weird headspace right now so um let's is this let's, is gonna be our asmr just... episode because we've talked about doing one yes this is the asmr episode um <laughs> i believe we've had this joke before but uh i'm not okay like just 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 okay space, so. i okay this this, this is going to be interesting jason just like tapped on my window and said he's doing a head count so is there no one at the circulation desk right now there is no one at the circulation desk right oh, now is what that means God. okay we're, we're off to a wonderful start today you know it's a good thing that we have editing tools that i make such good use of yes exactly um okay so i guess we can wait we're around. not gonna let people see how the uh, how sausage is made okay well i mean you know i ah uh, whatever keep it in who cares but well, as, <laughs> I, skip I, through it. well yeah i just i theoretically one of the three of us should go up to the circulation desk until jason gets back yeah that's true uh so do, okay do, i'll I'm the host. I'll uh, I'll go down with this ship and I'll go. Sit okay, the, I'll, I'll tell you. What, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Ryan and I will just continue to chat, and we'll see whether or not any of this gets edited out of this uh, episode. How fun! How exciting! Okay. Well, it, all it, right, everyone. Um, <laughs> Ryan, Joe, enjoy yourselves. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, great. Wow, I'm having visions of like the first podcast we did, where people kept knocking on my door asking for help. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, I remember watching that. Let me wave at Chris as he walks by. Oh, uh, yeah, that, <laughs> that, that, that seems like an appropriate thing to do. We, we can carry on the conversation we had yesterday about, uh, about, uh, holiday movies. Yeah, I, well, and, uh, I, I, I was going to throw a thing in there that I had thought could, could work as a, as a kind of a, a segue. Uh, there's a line in a movie that talks about how, uh, uh, the human spirit is very difficult to kill, even with a chainsaw. Um, and and that's from the the Adams family movie, which some people might consider a holiday movie, and 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 other people would 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 not. Well, we came to the real we came to the realization through talking that I am a holiday movie purist. I'm about as about as about as conservative as you can possibly get when it comes to holiday movies. Yeah. Um, if, from my mind, for it to be a holiday movie, 
the holiday must be part of the plot of the movie. Mm -hmm. It must be a, a part of the plot of the movie that cannot be removed, which means things like a Christmas story is not a holiday movie. It means like movies like Halloween is not a, is not a holiday movie. Mm -hmm. Now, Halloween three sees the witch. That is a holiday movie, but the, the original ho uh, Halloween, John Carpenter's Halloween, that is not a holiday movie. Um, cause again, in my mind for it to be a holiday movie, the holiday itself must be part of the plot of the movie, which means a lot of films that are, that are, you know, even have the name of the holiday in it for me, aren't really holiday movies. They are, cause that's not, it could be a different day. It could be a different holiday. It could be a different day. That's not integral to the, to the film itself. Okay. And you disagree with that. I, I, I do. I, I feel like it's a little bit too too narrow of a definition i will tell you that apparently the internet uh agrees with you i i did a search oh. for what makes what defines a holiday movie and they basically said what you said where that the the holiday and and they did not specify they just said any holiday movie whatever the setting uh the the holiday has to play an integral role in the movie so that if you took that holiday out it wouldn't it uh the movie wouldn't work um and i don't know i i i, I feel like that's a, a little too narrow a focus it's like well, again, you get as i said you get stuff like christmas story which is based off i forget the writer's name but it's a it's a, a group of his short stories basically set around right. winter that's yeah. the common theme between it. And they just made Christmas sort of this overarching idea of the film. But the film itself really doesn't deal with Christmas. It deals with um, life in, what was it, Cleveland? I forget exactly where it was at. Yeah, it's, 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 about, it's about family and family dynamics in that time period in that place. Um, yeah, and, and because it talks about school and glasses and bullies and the family dynamic i could see where that's true where if you could if if you had if you, if that movie was called a family story and not a christmas story and you didn't change anything else it the the, it, the movie still works see and i uh, we now the, it's funny because of your definition but i feel like Home Alone is not a holiday movie then because you were because you said that you thought it has to it kind of has to be Christmas for that story to work. And I don't think it does. I think it could be summer vacation and it would still work. Maybe, but I, I, I feel the winter aspect of it is, is a part of it, though. The winter aspect is part of it, but it wouldn't have to be because like there's stuff where. Uh, because they're cold, they turn on some kind of heating element. Well, they I, I got gotcha. you. You know, but they, I feel a major sub theme of that is the hollow the the holiday gathering, and the lack of the of the holiday gathering, the family gathering in Kevin's life, or in or there, he's missing that aspect of it. Um, well, see, I'd, it's funny to me because I feel like that you could do because of the way that the neighborhood is and the way that they talk about the neighborhood about like everybody is uh, everybody's leaves for the for the holiday and i feel like that that would work just as well uh doing summer vacation in like a country club area where the majority of families are just not around they they skip town and uh and because it's that thing about where he's Kevin feels like he doesn't fit in with his family and and that's a universal truth that's not holiday specific I agree with you but I think you have to jump through too many hoops at that point to change the movie up um let me put it that way uh-huh um but I understand what you're saying I understand what you're saying um that being said it still has the idea of a holiday maybe not sure. Christmas but it is a holiday film I'd say Okay. Okay. But see then, but see then that, 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 but, but if, if the definition of, uh, well, and see, that's a funny thing though, because of course, like home alone, it's not like Christmas is in the title or anything. Um, so 
even if it was summer vacation, I guess you could still sort of look at it as as a holiday movie. Um, I still think, though, that Summer Vacation has some aspects to it that the film doesn't. The film itself is rather cla claustrophobic, and I think you only get that claustrophobia in the cold of winter to some extent. Hmm. Everyone's, you know, kind of locked up in their own houses, and they don't get outside much type of idea. See, but I feel like you could flip it, and, you know, if you had it, if you had them be in, you know, Nevada or New Mexico or Arizona instead of wherever they are, and it's like, oh, it's summertime, we got to get out of here because it's going to be so freaking hot. And then you have that isolation thing about, okay, everyone just huddle. If, if, if anyone has stayed here, they are, they are huddled in their closet with the air conditioner on. I can see that. I can see that. And, um, and, and you'd still have those, those isolation themes. It, it, it's a border one for me. I mean, it's, 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 it's a border one for me, but again, as I said, th things like Halloween, uh -huh. I don't view that as a holiday picture. I mean, Halloween, the actual holiday of Halloween plays very little in the actual plot of that. Film. Absolutely. Uh, and like we said, the thing with like Friday, the 13th, the, the, the date or, you know, fr uh, Friday, the 13th has zero significance to that franchise. Uh, you know, it's a gimmick to one to put one to have the film come out really is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and if it was, uh, if, if he did his, you know, terrorizing of the world every four years it could just as easily be february 29th you know what are some other uh holiday films great holiday films uh well like uh my wife and i were talking this morning about holiday films and she was talking about like the um the old claymation ones that are very specifically holiday you Rankin know, Bass is who you're thinking of. Yes, that that is who I'm thinking of. Yes, and I couldn't think of it, but yes. So you get the you know Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer and Santa Claus is Coming to Town and uh, the Year Without a Christmas, all all of those guys. Now, having said that, they put out some that actually aren't holiday stories. Uh, Jack Frost isn't really particularly a holiday story. Even Frosty the Snowman isn't necessarily a holiday story. Lot of uh, Halloween, lot of Christmas out there. Um, now there is stuff again that if it, it's part of the plot, I consider. I just consider almost every any Christmas Carol. Uh, oddly enough, I do consider that a holiday film. I think it has to do with um, the idea of of the Victorian idea of setting aside a date during the winter. And the most miserable time in these people's lives to celebrate the mundane. I mean, and I think that's an aspect of it. Yeah. That you can't get rid of in, in the Christmas Carol. Um The Grinch steals steals Christmas, I think, is also another one that has to do, I think that you that's very much tied up into the idea of giving as a holiday and the the idea of the Christmas spirit or the Yule time spirit or the Psalm time spirit, the 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 winter solstice spirit, the idea that this is a Cold time, people aren't happy. There's no a lot of sunlight, but we're going to make the best of things. We're going to make things happy and joyful in Yule time, and yeah. we're going to we're we're going to do things like like gift giving, and um, Thanksgiving, not Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, but just giving thanks to the fact that we of what what we have and stuff like that. So, yeah, um, I do consider stuff like Christmas Carol and um, and How the Grinch Stole Christmas to be holiday films. Um. I don't usually go for holiday films that often. That's why I'm looking through some of these. I'm like, God, there's a lot of these that I've never, ever seen before. Yeah. Oh, uh, Charlie Brown Christmas. That's a classic one. That is a classic one. Yeah. Do I consider that a Christmas movie? Or Are we back? We, have you been recording this whole time? Uh, yeah, uh, we have. We've been yes. ignoring you. We actually did not stop recording while you were gone, and we were talking about what... <clears throat> And 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 we we like we may have to retroactively do this or 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 have the whole conversation again, but we were talking about what makes a holiday film a holiday film. And we we had the conversation yesterday, right before um, uh, I, I left for the day. And my my thing is for it to be a holiday film, 
the fact that the holiday itself must play a major plot point of, of, of film itself. Yeah. So if it, if it doesn't fill a major plot point of the film, it's not a holiday film. And I said that leads to very unusual things for things like Halloween is not a holiday film. Yet Halloween <laughs> three season of the witch is a holiday film. Yeah. So let's, um, let's back up just a little bit so we can talk about, um, and just in case we need to cut here, then that's, <laughs> that's, uh, something that we can do but um in case we do we had a little bit of a disruption so we're going to just move ahead with our conversation uh before we uh jump into all that uh our topic for the day though um what have we been doing lately oh oh <laughs> oh yeah we talk about that don't we sometimes <laughs> i've been dealing with insomnia and going through life like it in a haze for the past few weeks unfortunately <clears throat> that happens anything in particular that you've been killing your time with because i know when you haven't saw um, me you're... getting really mad when i'm trying to go to sleep and my brain won't let me <clears throat> see this is why i have and then, and then saying do i want to get up and try to make myself tired so i will fall asleep or do i just want to sit here and suffer hoping that i will fall asleep and that's that's been my struggle for like the last two weeks uh, I had that th the other day, and I pulled up my Steam Deck and I played video games until I fell asleep. Mm. That's why. That's a big reason why I have that thing. Um. So, what have you been up to, Joe? Well, um. Of course, I've actually been tied up in some things with work. We had uh the library held its uh Halloween uh pop culture mini convention, Rooftop Heroes, which we actually had on Halloween. And I feel like it went pretty well. Uh, we had uh, more survey responses to the event than we'd had the year before. We had more uh, entrance into the costume contest. Um, just yesterday, one of our speakers, uh, who is a professor here, uh, Lee Gagem, was telling me that she's had students come up to her, talking to her about how they liked her speech, how they uh, were excited about the event in general, and how they were glad that it you know, existed. Uh, which is wonderful feedback to have. And uh, this week, we've been celebrating Children's Book Week with a uh, daily story time. Um, we've had uh, members of the faculty and staff and administration even coming in and reading storybooks. Um, uh, the dean of the graduate program is coming this weekend to read, and yesterday the provost was here and read a book. Uh, she read a great book called Dragons Love Tacos, uh, and it was not one that I've been that I was familiar with before. Uh, and that's one of the things that I've loved about the story time is to be introduced to stories that I otherwise would not have uh, encountered. Um, away from work, uh, my wife and I are still reading through the uh, Wheel of Time series, and uh, we do a chapter every night. And we've been enjoying doing that. Um, I've been watching some TV things. Um, I just got done watching the newest season uh, based on the books, uh, The Lincoln Lawyer. Uh, and uh, I, I really like that. Um, yeah, uh, but that's 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 it, really. A lot, a lot of work stuff that have, has been um, pressing in on me and I sort of need a vacation. And so I'm looking forward to having some days off. That being said, like next week, I'm going to a, a, a librarian conference. So you've got a lot going on, Joe. A little bit. Yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm probably, I'm going to try to get, uh, get my girls up here to, to do story time on the last day that you're having it. So on we'll, Sunday, we'll yeah. see if that's going to be the case, but they, they've been out of town. Uh, we went back to do this, a good old boy fair that they do every year and mm -hmm. i've been here by myself so i've been un slowly mentally unraveling um but they will be back later today and if they're feeling up to it then we'll probably come by tomorrow and listen to some stories possibly i, I don't know what, what sure. we're gonna do. i don't know what we have going on well you're you're certainly welcome yeah, i think it's the right target audience for for that as well so um we'll see what happens there but i, I don't know I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> um, yeah, I haven't been doing anything. Again, um, like I said, I've been home alone for a week, and I've been horribly depressed, and that always happens when my family goes out of town. And um, 
playing a lot of video games that I've all well already definitely uh played many many times in the past but they're comfort games so it is what it is um read a lot of manga I caught up on a lot of uh, currently running stuff mm-hmm. um anything in particular I can't think of there's anything that I've been watching or anything uh, the new season of what we do in the shadows is is happening um the uh the Uzumaki anime ended and um I no longer have any hope for Adult Swim as a concept anymore and never will again. That was that was really sad. Um yeah, I I'm <clears throat> I'm kinda kinda reaching the bottom of the barrel there. It's been um Halloween was was a very um it's a very interesting time because we've always done a lot of stuff. Like last year we did a lot of stuff for um my daughter's uh that would be her second Halloween. She's uh she is about to turn three years old. So we we tried to do something when she was like zero years old, when she was a couple of months old or however much. Uh, and it didn't really, it wasn't really a great um time period or like age to be doing the kind of stuff that like trunk or treat is held uh, and whatever. Um, so then we did it last year, and it was she she ended up enjoying it but it's still really weird because she was she wasn't even two years old yet this year my wife just decided let's go to every single trunk or treat we can find and every event that's available and we're just going to let her have the the time of her life and we have a few friends who uh who are around her age that are um also doing things so um the the last Two and a half weeks or so of October was just a, a nightmare, a, a furious uh, uh, mirage of time that completely evaporated into nothingness. Um, but she had a lot of fun, and she ended up with 13 pounds of candy. Oh, wow. Uh, but we we measured it. We, we were in a bet with a friend. He said, I bet my seven-year-old can get more candy than your two-year-old and your uh and your almost one-year-old um even combined and i said okay all right we'll we'll see about that he got four pounds of candy by the end and um and i told him listen two and a half weeks of trick-or-treating is enough to put us over the edge for your one night of trick-or-treating so don't ever ever come at me when you make it a competition um so I wish that I could say there was more than that, but um, with, as far as my kids are concerned, uh, I th- th- that's that's where the majority of my time is willingly spent. So um, yeah, not a whole lot happening. Um, but that is to say, um, Halloween, one of our favorite. Um, or our favorite holidays. I, I think it's less so now <laughs> because because uh never quite been on the um hosting end of Halloween for children and now um I have a a greater depreciation of Halloween as a concept, I believe. Um it it's it's not fun as a parent as much as it is uh for, for before you're a parent. So um that is to say now, though, that um, it's also made me kind of enjoy that I can sit down and watch a holiday movie about the um, the institution of Halloween and not actually have to uh, participate in it. Plus, when it comes to a Halloween movie, it doesn't have to be Halloween before you can jump in and just, you know, enjoy it. You can say, "Oh, I'm in the mood for something Halloween like." Uh, yeah. I'll pick up I'll pick up like a, a copy of something this way comes or something wicked this way comes or uh, you know, a, a movie like um well, uh, Ryan had said this before, but you pick up a movie like Halloween and then hold on. Halloween's not really Halloween doesn't really evoke Halloweenness. It's more of a fall movie with a murderer in it, which of which there are a lot yeah. now. But that I, begs the question: What makes holiday movie? What makes a movie that is solely focused on an event or a holiday or a special occasion? 
And gentlemen, I, you were talking about this for like 20 minutes while I was away. So um, let's let's recap the conversation if we decide to to cut all of that uh, wonderful content. OK, well, R Ryan was saying, and apparently the Internet agrees with him, that in or what defines a holiday movie is that that holiday has to be integral to the storyline to a degree that if you removed that holiday from that story, the story <clears throat> would not make sense or the story wouldn't work. Um, that being the case, yes, like Friday the 13th is not a holiday movie. It's about a serial killer. It doesn't matter when he's killing people. And ditto with Halloween, with the exception of the third one, which is all about Halloween. And Halloween too, I think, right? Because a, a major part of that is that um, it's, it's like an hour after the first movie and it's Halloween and people are, you know, they've got their masks and costumes on. And uh, that's kind of how uh, Mike Myers, uh, Michael Myers blends in is that it's a uh, um, Halloween night. I think I seem to recall that's that's kind of the, the premise of that one. OK, I, I think. don't know. Yeah. I have watched two of the movies in the Halloween franchise. I watched the third one, which most people say is an abomination. And oh no, it's the exist. best of the lot. It's the best. That's the one that, that's the one everyone loves. <laughs> and, and the other one that I saw was the uh, H2O, oh. which I actually really liked. Uh, it, it actually met my needs for a, a monster movie. The spookiest of all elements, water. Well, no, it's the that is the twenty, you know, the twenty year yeah. anniversary H two O thing. Water <laughs> is its own separate thing, but no, I call it H two O. But uh, the, uh, the, I I don't know because it was clever. Uh, no, I I, I loved that one because it was all like, oh, there's this scary thing that happened and it's been happening for a long time, and now it's finally ending. Uh, and then they've made, you know, 15 more of them. Well, that's the funny thing about that is that that's been the theme of the Halloween movies ever since that movie is we're going to like the last one that they made, they keep like they have the townsfolk like with pitchforks going, we're going to end the evil tonight. Um, it's like, but they've been that's been the, the catchphrase of this whole series for like 15 years after after the, the 20th anniversary movie. Yeah. Um, so the theme, the primary theme of Halloween now is we're going to kill Mike Myers. Michael, I keep getting the two confused. We don't want to kill Mike Myers. We want to kill Michael Myers. We don't want to kill Mike Myers. I, I, I have differing feelings about the other one also, but we'll. <laughs> I, I will. I did see a bunch of memes this, this, this Halloween where they basically, they took out Michael Myers and they put in Mike Myers into all the scenes. Yeah. I saw someone cosplaying as a cosplay. God. Uh, uh, with uh Austin Powers uh outfit, and someone was like, "Are you a a teacher from the '60s or something?" And they said, "I hate this generation. <laughs> I am so I'm so annoyed." Um, which, by the way, I'll champion the first two, and for a the very much lesser extent, third uh, Austin Powers movies. Those movies are uh, near perfect. I think they're so stupid. I love them. But that's neither here or there. That's a that's the Mike Myers um, hero story, not the Michael Meyer, Myers hero story. Right, right. Um, th there is a this is a conversation that I actually I actually couched on my on my Facebook. Uh, I w I wanted to see how this was going to go over for my friends who are willing to have very nasty arguments with me, and it went about as well as I expected it to, but. On the topic of of the time of the the era of um, of how a movie is like it like the the time that it's set that's the setting right you need a couple of things to make uh, any kind of story you need the narrative that's probably the most important you need tone theme uh, setting and you know a few other things here and there and characters I guess if you want to be uh, spicy about it. Um, how would you all, um, how would you describe 
the holiday of the Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, is it a Christmas movie or is it a Halloween movie? It's a Halloween movie. Mm -mm. Not in any way. That's a Christmas movie. That's a Halloween Be movie. That's a Christmas movie because the themes, the themes of The Nightmare Before Christmas is that Jack Skellington is learning about the traditions and the the feelings and the idea of Christmas. We as an audience already know what Halloween is. And the movie starts with the, the big Halloween thing. And Halloween is never a prominent plot point for the rest of the movie because it's about learning the spirit of Christmas. And it's about saving Santa Claus. Hmm. Well, um... I think it's... How about this? It's a Tim Burton Christmas. Oh, okay, yeah. Perfect, <laughs> exactly, because Tim Burton is the tone. He himself sets the tone. He creates the atmosphere. I... Um, I really but, hate the idea that we 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 can use Tim Burton as like as like a genre or a setting. Or well, a it's like David Lynch, you know, like like a Lynchian movie has a, a very specific tone, or like a um, Kubrick, you know. Um, I really regret putting Tim Burton in the presence of those two directors in particular, but directors, especially ones who really have their own voice are able to create that tone on their own. Well, with their direct I will movie. admit, uh, I will, I will, I will, I will uh, see the fact that it is a Christmas movie, but it's a Christmas movie with a, with a Halloween filter over the top of it. Yeah, sure. Of course. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and on that same token, like Gremlins is, gr is Gremlins enough? Does it have a focus enough on Christmas to be a Christmas movie? I don't think so. I think it does. I also think that Gremlins is a perfect Christmas movie. The you know the concept is um, Billy gets Gizmo as a as a gift, and a lot of the kills, a lot of the the really fun uh, action set pieces are designed around it being set in Christmas. Okay, I've got something for you guys. It's gonna be a contest, so I'm going to reward one of you with your choice of my stickers. Um, you get Your three stickers, stickers actually if you if you win this one. Okay, and it's whoever's closest. So think about this very carefully. What is the number according to IMDb? How many Hallmark Christmas movies have there been? Two hundred and thirteen. Is that your final answer? My final answer. I'm going to say that it is more than that. You got the over. Yeah. Joe, you can come by and pick up your uh, your your three stickers whenever you want. Okay. The official number is 447. Come on. Paul Mark, I'm so sick of this. <laughs> Just... <clears throat> um yeah, so see, and, and those are specifically like I am assuming those are specifically like family gets together on Christmas and either has a uh, well no, a... it's usually um a People dating around Christmas. Oh, that too. They're all romance. They're all romance. Uh... Well, that that also begs the question: Is like Love Actually? Is that a Christmas movie? And I don't think anyone's going to argue that that is like the perfect Christmas romance movie. It has both really endearing romances. It has really like strenuous romances. But the the whole premise is that it's a bunch of people around Christmas time. Alan Rickman's entire character is about him being unfaithful to his wife through christmas it's not like he's physically unfaithful to her but he does you know he gives a really nice christmas present to just some some girl at, at his uh the place that he works at while he gives his wife like some like a bunch of cds that's the whole conflict of that storyline in that movie so that's where i think you get the the line is drawn is how integral is the holiday to to that part of the movie and i you know i draw my line at i don't think the nightmare before christmas is a halloween movie because the word christmas isn't the title <laughs> um but yeah that's that's why i wanted to like i would come by your offices and i'd talk to you too and then i'd be like oh let's completely couch any conversation about about this topic until we really get into it because there are a few good examples of it and i've got one that i'm saving but I, i'd like to hear from from 
the two of well, you also. Work. I'm going to I'm going to be the 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 person who's going to be the jaded um, Gen Xer in the room for a second. The truth of the matter is, holiday films are like many holidays, a marketing ploy. Mm -hmm. oh, they yeah. are basically is that people have time off during this period. Let's make a movie about this period because. We've run out of actual good ideas on what to actually do. And we can hopefully get um, everyone from the entire family, from grandma down to little little baby Bo in the seats to watch our our, our quickly put together on a string uh, a a string budget uh film uh for people to watch. Uh but that's nothing usual, unusual. Um most of our so-called holidays are basically invented by florists and, and greeting card companies. I hate to say it, but it's absolutely true. It's a marketing ploy. It's a way of getting people to spend money. Did you see the new uh, did you see the new Eli Roth Thanksgiving movie? Uh, yeah, I didn't see the movie, but I saw the in the Apparently that's a that was a, a pro, like a that was a a work of passion for him. Like he specifically wanted to make a Thanksgiving themed horror movie. Like that's it's weird. I want to watch that one. I, I'm sure it's no good because Eli Roth, but at that point, like, I don't think that's just a marketing ploy. I think that's just the, the idea of having a Thanksgiving themed slasher film is cute. It's unique. That's a big thing. I think about a lot of these, like the like tone setters is like sometimes just having a specific genre take place at a specific time of year. That's, that's extremely unique. <coughs> I, well, we were talking about this yesterday, and um, I think that um, spring break is a holiday genre. Spring break, spring break, spring break is a is a holiday that can be celebrated in film. <clears throat> okay, yeah. So, like, spring breakers is a, a, a holiday film. Then, well, there's a lot of films set around the idea of spring break, especially from like the '80s. I think it started with Hard Bodies, I think was the first one. Oh, sure. But there's a, there's, it, there's a whole genre of yeah. basically people leaving um, leaving school to go party somewhere. For sure, yeah, and you can do anything with that. Like, you can make a horror movie, you can make a comedy, obviously. You can arguably make a romance. Yeah, that's something that I think, just in general, like, if you can put down that time period and the, like, Whatever the event is, that's a holiday movie because it's about that, you know, whatever it is. Or vacation or, or what have you. <clears throat> uh, I hate that I'm doing this. Okay. Uh, Love Actually is not a Christmas movie. Let me state that I really, really like that movie. But it's not a Christmas movie. It doesn't have to take place at Christmas. You could remove Christmas from it, and it would make no difference to the story. I think he disagrees. The central with conflict of Alan Rickman's character is that... No, 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 stop. No, no. No, no, no. We're going to have the, a big, the, the, have the, a big the, disagreement the... on this one. No, I think that movie has to take place at Christmas. No, it doesn't. That's the whole point. Alan, Alan, Alan Rickman is... Okay, by by what you said is contemplating being unfaithful to his wife. We actually have no idea whether or not there was a physical element to his relationship with the secretary. That could easily have occurred off screen, and they could have been romping on the regular, and we wouldn't The met. necklace. It does not have to be at Christmas. The at necklace all. is symbolic of his unfaithfulness. No. Yes, no, it is because that's the one he didn't have to give her this expensive necklace she was looking at that had like a heart on it. That's the that's the point that it symbolizes a type of love. That's the entire point of the movie is that no. it's different types of love that no. are represented. Yes, it is about different kinds of love, but it does not have to be at Christmas. You do not suddenly. OK, one of the reasons we have all the Christmas movies that we have is because we don't love each other. The the a, a common theme of Christmas movies is wouldn't it be great if we loved each other all the time? Uh, uh, and and yeah, together that in that movie be because they fall in love don't. over Christmas. No, no, because because the because the point is we can not that we should, but that we can. 
There's no reason why you should be a happier, more jolly, more loving person only in the month of December. That's ludicrous. It's insane. That's your marketing ploy. It's like, hey, we got candy here for you. Maybe okay. you should be good to your fellow man for this four weeks. Let me let That's me ridiculous. let me recontextualize that then. Okay. Sure. Love actually is a Christmas Rashomon with romance. No. Christmas Pulp Fiction. How about that? Oh, that's the that's the furthest I'll go. That I'll that I'll be willing to meet you halfway. Uh, it no. It it it, it could be literally any time of the year. The it way that be, it's though, doing the, the, whole point... it, the way that it's doing the montage of stories, the people making the porno, the person that goes to America to He goes to experience. America because it's Christmas. It's not because it's Christmas. It's, no, but that's the that's the point of of his character is that it's Christmas. The the point of again, I keep I'll I'll keep going. No, back to it. it's Rickman not. His his his, his whole point is is that the life. reason no one likes me in Britain is because everyone here is British. If I went somewhere where it was unusual for me to be British, people would like me more. It being Christmas has zero impact on that movie. Like like the end of the semester play that they're having at school could as easily be in May and be the end of the school year. Okay. The, so the Christmas they're, they're does not matter to that movie. Okay. I love that movie. It's a course, great yeah, movie. We, it does, it's not a Christmas movie. It doesn't have to be a Christmas movie. And so Christmas I, does not matter to that movie. Christmas matters more in Die Hard than it does no, in action. Ab, no. No, yep. absolutely not. You're making the same Die argument. Hard is more of a Die Christmas, not being a Christmas movie, movie than, than you are for Love Actually being a Christmas, uh, be, not being a Christmas movie. The, okay. I can't believe that you, I was getting ready to peel off this Band-Aid too, but I am I am not happy about this one. Listen, okay, fine. I'll take the reins on this one. Die Hard is not a Christmas movie. Okay. Die Hard could literally take place at any other time of the year. It Like the fact that it's, Cold and snowy, that doesn't even happen in the movie. It's not cold or snowy in the movie. The fact that John McClane is seeing his wife again has nothing to do with the fact that it's Christmas. It's just, it could be literally any holiday. It could be Thanksgiving. It could be spring break. That doesn't matter. That has no bearing on any part of the rest of the movie. The only thing that would change by taking that movie out of Christmas and, and any other holiday at all is... Now I have a gun, ho, ho, ho. Trick or treat, now I have a gun. You know, um, happy Easter, and now I have a... You know, you can change that line to any other holiday, and, and it wouldn't change anything about that movie. That movie is not Christmas-related whatsoever. The The central theme, the central conflict, nothing about... The setting, even. Nothing about that has anything to do with Christmas outside of that one line. So... No, there is a there are a lot of things that you're you're rightfully arguing that Love Actually is ultimately not a Christmas movie. Die Hard is not remotely related to Christmas whatsoever. It's just a cute setting that people like to use to prop up the the a really a really really good action movie that could be served any other way in any other holiday. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen the film, so I'm not commenting. <laughs> Was he Die Hard? No, I haven't seen Love Actually. Oh my god, I was about to say like, okay. Um, oh, well, you're. I haven't you seen Die Hard. Record, I've, seen, I've seen Die Hard before either one of you have. I mean, that's probably. I mean, you saw it before I was born, so <laughs> you both have seen that movie before I was born, so that's okay. Have, Until have Blade Two book, came out, Die Hard was fun. my go-to, my favorite action film of all time. Um. Well, I mean, yeah. Um. I, Die Hard and and cranked. And crank too high voltage are the pinnacle. Crank too high voltage is a little too slapstick for me. That's why it's so perfect. But that movie's that's not a holiday movie at all. I don't think anyone would argue that that's a holiday no, movie whatsoever. No. Except I've got a really for good site, guys. It is the um, ICU guide. ICUC guide to holiday films, traditional and non traditional. They have 150 traditional and non traditional holiday films. And they've broken them up into very Christmassy, and this is just a movie with a Christmas scene in it, type of thing. It's, but it's a really good, good, uh, good list. A good way of breaking stuff down. 
Yeah, and, and I think that's where we're getting probably the most contentious here is that it's like, are we talking strictly tradition or are we like the tradition doesn't really matter? Um, and what? I think at the end of the day, what I really want to say is none of this matters whatsoever. It doesn't matter if you think a movie's a Christmas movie or not. If you want to watch that movie at Christmas and it gives you good feelings, I I don't care. It's not just that I'm I will argue with you, with you about it. I don't care at all. True. You enjoy yourself however you want and live your life to the, to its fullest and it won't affect me whatsoever. Yeah. I, and neither will this yeah. argument. <laughs> but the reason I, I like to talk about this is yeah. because it gives you a, you know, it it might give you a better appreciation of something or it might help you, you know, wrap your head around why it is that you like it. Why do you like Die Hard as a Christmas movie? You know, maybe it's just because it br brings you the holiday spirit. I don't know. Sure. And just to really reiterate, I don't care. Okay. Let, um, I I actually read an article a number of years ago about what makes a movie a Christmas movie. And based on that, whether or not Die Hard counted as a Christmas movie. With, I'm not trying to convince you. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what this article said. It has been a number of years since I read this article, and I don't remember it entirely. But part of it was um, the time setting, that it's actually on or around Christmas, the presence of decorations, the presence of uh, images or an actuality of Santa Claus, um, you know, uh, the singing of Christmas carols. It had a, it had a list of things. Um, and it was talking about that the movie Die Hard had all of those things. And it talked about the number of appearances of it. And it then compared Die Hard to some other more classic traditional Christmas movies. And in some of the categories, it actually, Die Hard actually scored higher than some other traditional Christmas movies. Okay. So there's that. Not trying to convince you. I'm just saying that that's not just solely my opinion. It's a thing that there's been a little bit of study on. Okay. Let me ask you a, 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 a question that I feel like is relevant to the conversation. Whether or not it is a holiday movie, what are movies that you associate with the holiday or that you really particularly enjoy on a specific holiday? Like Ryan and I were discussing the alien fighting movie Independence Day, and he and we were having a discussion about whether or not it's actually a 4th of July movie. Whether or not it is, I know a lot of people that watch that movie on or around the 4th of July in a celebratory way. In a similar way, my son just watched V for, v for Vendetta on November 5th because they talk about Guy Fawkes Day during the course of that movie, which is celebrated on November 5th, uh, anniversary of the event. Remember, and so, remember the 5th of November. Yeah. So so every November 5th, since that movie came, came out, my son has watched that movie. Uh, Ryan and I were talking about the uh, getting out of jail movie with Nicolas Cage, Con Air. Um, I really like to watch that movie on the day that it's set, which is July 14th, which is Bastille Day, which is a, a celebration of getting a bunch of people out of jail. Um, so with that being said, what are some movies that you associate with or particularly enjoy on a specific holiday? I have a couple of other examples too, actually. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're already, you already talked about it. You mentioned a few, um, what, what are some other examples that you have? Well, like, um, although the, even the movie itself does not actually take place on Thanksgiving because of the play that happens at the summer camp in Adam's Family Values. We often watch Adam's Family Values uh, on or around Thanksgiving. Um, that's that's one. One of those is, is Christmas themed, isn't it? Is the first one Christmas themed? Um, the, there's a Christmas scene in it. I mean, um, I associate it. I, I, this is maybe this is just me being dumb. I associate it with Christmas because of the end when Morticia's knitting the the, the octopus uh, PJs, uh -huh. even though it's like PJs or yeah, 
uh, year round things. For some reason, I just associate that with like a Christmas uh, visual. Yeah. Well, and I mean, like, I know that there are people who really enjoy watching like all of the Harry Potter movies around. Oh, you took my, you took the wind out of my sails. I'm sorry, I did not mean to. Um, so you, since you, you said that, yes, about. I'll say that my my favorite Thanksgiving movie is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Okay, Philosopher's Stone, whatever. I, I prefer okay. Philosopher's Stone. It's it's the real okay. it's a real thing. Um, my one of my favorite Christmas movies is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. And one of my favorite Halloween movies is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I'll watch that movie in literally any holiday, and it's yeah. and it's perfect. There's going to be one scene, no matter what holiday it is, there's one scene, at least in that movie, where they're going to be doing something at school, and I'm just like, and I just get, like, my heart melts a little. I'm like, oh, that's that's so comfy. That's yeah. like the coziest example of this holiday I've I've ever seen. That that bit when it, when Harry is walking through the um, the courtyard with his scarf and he has a, a Hedwig on his arm. It's like this is that's there's Christmas right there. There's Christmas, perfect. No notes whatsoever. <sighs> but that is absolutely not a an anything holiday kind of movie. That is yeah. just a movie with a bunch of holidays that are represented. Yeah, pitch perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I find a good allegory for my stance on holiday films. Okay. okay. The wedding film. The wedding film? The wedding film. A film is a wedding film if it's about the trials and tribulations of an upcoming wedding. A well, wedding sure, film but... is not a film with a wedding in it. Okay. So I get tired of okay. people saying this is a holiday film because... It has aspects of a holiday in it. There are lots of movies in, out there that have a <clears throat> wedding scene in them, but they are not about the wedding. Uh, you know, the wedding is the denouement at the end. The wedding is a is something the the main characters go to in the middle of it, which makes them reconsider their their relationship. The wedding is how the film begins, or something along those lines. Well, those like a aren't Shakespearean... wedding films, uh -huh. but those are films with weddings in them. Just like I think there there are holiday films. And then there are films with holidays in them. There's, there's a difference between the two. That makes sense. And I, um, yeah. I, yeah. I do think that for um, for like the concept of the wedding, you know, like Shakespearean comedies are, are traditionally defined as they start and end with a wedding. Same way as Shakespearean tragedies begin and end with a funeral. And that's like, that's the, the most simplistic way of describing those as, as far as uh like tone and genre go but like that that's kind of the traditional way that we think about those for me the wedding isn't just the wedding itself because um i proposed to my wife in like a, like a june i think of 2018 and we got married in october um 2019 and it had nothing to do with christmas it was just it was just a good time of year but I associate the wedding with all of that wedding planning. It was a year and a half of planning. It's one of the most stressful times I've ever been alive. <laughs> like anything about the wedding planning and all the tribulations, like there's a lot of arguing. There's a lot of set up there. There's a lot of going back and forth with like vendors and stuff. The whole event up to and including the wedding and everything after that until it's all said and done like all the paperwork's been filed and everything else that is the wedding it's just that the wedding itself is the punctuation it's the climax of the entire like planning procedure so i yeah i do i do agree that a wedding is like a general like it's the same tone as a holiday movie in that it's like it is an event and it has kind of a specific like traditions with it there are there are the aesthetics associated with it. There are traditions associated with it. There is an actual event that occurs at a certain time that is associated with it, but that does not necessarily mean that that move that the movie is about a wedding, right? Okay, sure, yeah, of course. I just to clarify and make sure that we're on the same page with that definition, talking about a wedding film, uh, ver uh, versus a film that has a wedding in it. Or a wedding scene in it so like princess bride which has some some story elements about a wedding and a wedding scene is not a wedding film no but father of the bride is a wedding film 
Well, you need to get out of my brain because I was going to say that is the wedding film. Yeah. Father of the Bride is the classic one, both the original yeah. and the, the remake. Okay. Uh, absolutely. I, uh, but no, yeah. yeah. Uh, Princess Bride, no, that's a that's a fantasy adventure romance. Wedding Crashers, a wedding in it. Um, um, Bridesmaids, um, uh, Bachelor Party, those are all wedding films, I'd say. Yeah. Okay. So I think I think at this point we've all got a baseline here. I think we all agree that one, it doesn't matter who cares, and two, we all have our own definitions of like of what you consider to be a holiday movie. And it doesn't have to be a specific holiday, like a wedding's not on a day. It could be any season whatsoever, or it could be that the season itself is where you draw the line at it being a traditional holiday movie. So I'd like to ask just what are some of your favorites. It doesn't specifically have to be the holidays. Mm. That's probably what I'm going to focus on. But just what you really prefer as a holiday movie. What you lift up as one of like a perfect example of it. Joe mentioned it before while you were gone. But the the Rankin-Bass um, stop motion films. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think are the ones that I really hold up as the great traditional. I know some people are like Charlie Brown Christmas and stuff like that, but but for me it was it was the Rankin Bass stop motion, uh, the Rudolphs, uh, the slate of Rudolph stuff, the slate of um, oh, they they did everything they did they they did the Easter Bunny, um, they did uh, they did all sorts of of holidays and on this extended universe that they created after a while. Um, I think those were is as a child. I think those that was the top for me. That exemplified a a holiday film and the best that the holiday films could produce. They they don't feel cynical. I think that's the one thing is they have all these movies around a bunch of different holidays and none of them feel like they're cynical or like cash grabby or whatever. They're just like they're really just. Well, I think it was also fun the voice acting they got because they hired a bunch of. Almost odd, old vaudevillian type type uh, singers and stuff like that, and so there's there's this. It's it, they're not as saccharine as they could be, I guess is what I'm trying to say. There there's a little bit of an edge to them, a little bit, not a lot, but there's a little bit of an edge to it. There's a little bit of a, a, a wink at the audience, a little bit, a little bit of tongue in cheek in him, a little bit of danger, not a lot, but just a little bit of you know of of of, of something. The jokes for adults as well as kids, basically, I guess is what. I'm going for and I just it's something that the entire family can enjoy something that is still wholesome that is still uplifting and makes me ball like a little kid sometimes with some of those some of those scenes mm -hmm. 100% yeah um I I agree with you in in in, in general um I do really like the uh the Charlie Brown Christmas um I, there's a, a thing that is not a film. It was a, a snippet from a, a holiday special. And, and to me, the holiday season is not complete if I don't get to watch it. Uh, but it's uh, from some holiday special back in the day with Bing Crosby and David Bowie singing at the piano together. Um, and I love it. It's, it's so good. Um, and, 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 and that three minute video or whatever uh, is better and more wholesome and more endearing to me than many projects that are much longer in length. I think you've sent that one to me before. I, I yeah, I I absolutely love that little. Now I'm thinking thing. about sending you the uh, the uh, funnier die uh, parody of it that they did that uh, that Will um, Will Ferrell did. Okay, that I, I'm sure I've seen both probably. Um, I've got one that's also a, a holiday special. Um, it's the one that my wife and I have put up our Christmas tree with every 
every year since we've since we've lived together before we lived together we put this on for um like wrapping presents for our family or whatever it's the always sunny in philadelphia christmas special it's so absurdly stupid and it's so mean-spirited like more than anything else and it's always sunny in philadelphia that's the most mean-spirited episode i think of the entire series and from beginning to end it's so cozy and it's so hilarious it's it's one it's the first episode I think they they put it out on a DVD or something. It's the first one they ever made uncut. The the first time they ever dropped an f bomb in that entire series was for the Christmas special. Um, it's the it's the most violent and goriest episode of the series as well. Like the only one that's explicitly like uh, seriously violent. Um, they pushed the boundary so hard for that special for no reason, and it serves no purpose other than like the the gang basically saying like we're all in this together because even a tradition like christmas is ugly and horrible when we're involved with it but at least we have each other um it's ever like i said every single year when we put up the christmas tree it's that all right put on the sunny christmas special and we'll watch it on repeat until it's done now we kind of reverted back to like, well, we can't put this on while the kids are here. <laughs> so now it's back to, we put this on when we're wrapping presents and we'll do that forever. Like that's, that's our tradition um, that I will, even though it is like, yeah, obviously it's a, it's a Christmas special of a TV show. And that's like, it's like you said, saccharin in its own way, but there's nothing else that that's like bringing in the holiday to me that, than that one Christmas special. I I have never ever seen even one full episode of that series. I doubt you'd like it. I doubt you'd uh, like it as well. He did make me watch the um the Family Feud episode of it, which was absolutely hilarious. There are so, there are episodes that everyone's gonna like. There are, there are there's one episode of that series for everyone, I think, but not the entire series. Not yeah. not all of it's always sunny is gonna resonate with you, but. Yeah. Uh, probably my favorite one now is um, Charlie meets his dad in Ireland and he dies of COVID like the next day and it's them like trying to carry this body up a up a up a mountain in Ireland and they all just throw up their hands and say screw this this is stupid I'm not doing it anymore and it's a funny episode but near the end of it uh, Charlie's the only one left carrying his dad's body up this mountain where he wanted to be uh, you know, thrown off the ocean thrown off a cliff into the ocean or whatever and he breaks down in tears saying, you were supposed to carry me, and now I'm having to carry you, and and you were never there for me, so what, why, why should I be here for you? And it's like, Sonny's a funny series. It's always funny, and there are only like two or three emotional moments of the entire show. And that one, it, coming from a, a single-parent house with just my mom, it like, it, it pierced me, and I was like, oh, okay, well, this this is this just became a deeply sentimental and emotional moment for me and a lot of people aren't going to watch that show and have that moment but that's now is sunny is the feel sad about my dad show and also the the christmas show for me okay well okay one of the things that i appreciate about our podcast and this little group of 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 people um is that we can vehemently disagree about things and 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 still otherwise get along and also because of the fact that we do disagree about a variety of things i think it actually makes it cooler and more special when we find something that we can actually all agree on um oh, yeah absolutely that's what we're well, that's what being human is all about is finding those little things that we that we link up with and and also to to be able to appreciate something for someone else even recognizing that it's not maybe for me. Like, I don't care about that show for me, but I'm glad that it exists and gave you the joy that it gave you and and the uh, emotional tugs and, and whatever. Um, I'm glad that there are those shows out there for people. There are well, some shows that I think should not exist just in general, but we won't get into that. Um, but well, on the, on that though, just so I can say that it's you know I I agree with you there. Uh, there was an episode that I just I didn't get right. Mm -hmm. I I just I watched. It, I was like I, I'm sure I'm sure someone appreciates this, but I I'm 
I, it's just, I don't, I don't understand what, you know, what they're trying to say, I guess. Um, yeah. There's a character named Mac who's like the joke. He's, he's a, a meathead idiot. Um, but a, a running theme is that he's a closeted gay man. And that's kind of played up as a, as a joke for a long time. But then there's one episode, there's a season where he finally decides like, yeah, I'm gay and I'm going to be out about it. And at the very end of the series, or this season rather, um, Danny DeVito, uh, for whatever reason, is like plugging his nose that won't stop bleeding. And he looks horrible. And like that does tie into the fact that also Mac is... Uh, staying closeted for his dad who's in prison and his dad in prison has been a, a running joke for the whole thing and um someone says that it's like the feeling he has is like um like dancing with a beautiful woman but you don't know each other and um the end something like something like that it's something something like that and the end of the episode is this highly choreographed emotional dance between mac and this woman dancer and his dad gets up and leaves but frank who's taken the disgusting uh, nose plugs out and he's just like just free bleeding it kind of it focuses in on him after this this protracted um really well-made dance scene and he goes I get it. And then it cuts to credits and that's the end of the season. And having seen the episode with Charlie and his dad, that was, that was me. Like at the same time I said, Oh, I get it. You know, um, that's, this is completely a, ta a tangent and it's completely aside, but it's like, it's one of those things where like Sonny now is, is really a, a big place in my heart. And I think that the, the few times that they've, that they've kind of like pulled back and said like, let's, you know, Let's treat the characters with respect and dignity like they deserve from time to time. Yeah. Um it has nothing to do with the holidays though. That's okay. It's it's all about the the feeling that you get in your heart. Exactly. Yeah. Um any other uh well, we we, well, about three things, really. what is the best holiday film? Krampus. 2014 horror film Krampus. I know what Krampus yeah. is. Yeah. Uh Jaws. Oh, okay. Fourth of July. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm I'm I feel that, you. You might be yeah, right about it. Yeah, I don't know if I can I can beat that one. Okay, yeah. Nope. Yep. Yeah, got it. Yep. Yeah, I think you win. <laughs> I think I think you just definitively answered the question. <laughs> I think Groundhog Day is up there. What is? I think um Groundhog's Day, you said? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think uh It's a Wonderful Life is up there. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now somebody mentioned that uh on that one page they were mentioning the fact that a lot of people think that um um oh god, my brain is just completely fried. Um Citizen Kane is a Christmas movie. No. Whoever said that, you're wrong. No, it's not. In, in no way is that a Christmas movie. Um, you can have you can have a snow sled and it not be Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's weird, but okay, I, I can kind of <laughs> see it. But no, that's that's not a Christmas movie. No, I, I I don't I don't think I can go go with that one. No, I agree with you. I'm just saying that some people have you know people have mentioned that as the best. Uh, one of the best movies of all time and some people consider it a christmas movie because of the snow globe and because of the of the uh of of the sled yeah it, it is still one of the greatest movies of all time i think that that um its age does not does not bear any reflection on its quality that movie is nearly perfect it's the same as the godfather like that those movies are timeless but it's not a christmas movie i i don't want to get into it right now but i feel like we could actually have a whole episode talking about the difference between an important movie and a good movie. We should get and, someone from from MassCom when we do that one. Yeah, I think. yeah. Maybe we could get Jonathan Quam in here or somebody. And, oh yeah, yeah. I'm sure he'd have more than a few opinions on on what makes a 
a classic. Well, we brought up Citizen Kane, we brought Jaws. And the purpose of Citizen Kane was to try several t t t new techniques and develop a new way of telling stories through film, mm -hmm. much like um, Battleship of Tenkin did, did uh, 50 years earlier. Or wait, not 30, 50 years earlier, 25, 30 years earlier. Sure. Um, but I think uh, that way it's a very important film. The purpose of Jaws was to sell tons of tickets. So yeah, I understand it elevates. It, it becomes be elevated over time, I think. And the good film. I, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're, I think we're kind of running up on time, but um, I, I wanted to, to just make sure if there's... Yeah. Okay, I, we're almost done. This is This is going to be the edited episode. One of you needs to go watch Circulation Desk because Jason's hungry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I watched it earlier. Uh, I can do it again, but Joe, do you want to? Uh, yeah, I can. Do uh, Do we need to do it now? No, yeah. I mean, okay, yeah. So um, let's, yeah. So things are happening, and we need to uh, probably wrap this up within like the next minute or so. All right, so, let, um, let, let, me, let me run through this things happening list real quick, and then I'll yes, go watch the do. desk, and we'll live the rest of our lives. Yeah. Um, uh, if you're ready to level up your uh, education, you're invited to Makeda graduation, Graduate School Preview Days happening November 13th through the 15th. It's your chance to explore our programs and get the inside scoop on your grad school journey. Uh, join the Wichita Falls Museum of Art okay. at MSU Texas for a workshop on watercolor uh, on the art of food. Workshop is free, open to all age groups. Department of Music will present the Wind Ensemble uh, and Midwestern Singers. Uh, November 14th, MSU Texas Theaters presenting the Thanksgiving play, uh, MSU Burns Fantasy of Lights, um, November 25th through December 26th, uh, Riverbend Nature Center uh, is doing Electric Critters, it's uh, 200 lighted displays, Fridays and Saturdays from the end of November through uh, December, uh, and uh, Therapy Dogs coming back to Moffat Library, on December 2nd and December 3rd. And you can learn about all of those things and get details at uh, the events page uh, of uh, MSU Texas and discoverwichitafalls.com slash events. All right, thank you all very much for listening. I know we kind of had to just end this kind of abruptly, but life moves on. Uh, we'll be back next time to talk about, um, what are we gonna talk about? Something else. Something else? Okay, we'll talk about something else next time. Okay. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you next time.